Hello everyone and welcome to Sterling Lee Fine Art. It's Thursday night, it's seven o'clock, here we are again. Um, thanks for tuning in. What I'm going to do this week is the painting that I worked on last week with the, um, the red and the pink and the, uh, the lady sitting on top of the column. We're going to continue with that. <clears throat> and um, I'm going to add some more to the background and I'm going to also do some flesh tones to the top of the body and I'm going to show you how I mix the flesh tone paints which I thought would be a nice thing to do. So, um, since last week <coughs> I've, um, excuse me by the way, I've, um, done, I've done a lot more work on, uh, on the body and so there's a lot of flesh tone in there uh, which I will show you shortly. Um, which is looking really good actually um, and uh, the way that I put the uh, the background on around the column last week has proved to be really effective again which I'll show you shortly um, so what I've done is I've got the the last part of the background color that I want to add already mixed and I'm going to show you how I mix, mix the flesh tone and um, then we can crack on so what I've done to start off with this week is I've already masked off the um, body of the of the model. So I'll just show you this. There you go. So I've just put some masking tape over it, and I, as you can see, I've peeled this off and I've cut around there. In fact, there's a nasty little nasty little bit sticking out there which I don't quite like. That'll be okay though. Um. And I've taken it off, which is very tricky, and then I've cut out the shape which I drew on in pencil, and um, then I've reapplied it. Unfortunately, it's gone back in pretty much the same place it came off, which is always a bonus. Um, having to do this, I've missed a bit down, that's not quite right, is it? But that'll be fine, don't mind. Um, having to do this because I want the background. The background colour I'm going to put on in this sort of area around here to really sit in the background and because it'll be quite coarsely applied then when I come to finish off hello again when I come to finish off the um the figure itself it will actually stand out um quite prominently which is the effect that I want so um Without further ado, as they say, better get to doing some painting. I've already mixed a colour. I've used the, um, basically, it's quite a nice chunk of white. Um, just turn you there so as you can see that quite easily. You don't need to be quite so close. Oh, if I just put you there, you can just see, just in there. Da, 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 da. That's, the, that's the reference I'm using. Uh, again, the same one as I speak by a wonderful artist called Paul Sample. And all I'm using that reference for is his colour tones. I really like the colour tone on that image. There you go. Right on the painting. So um, that's what I intend to uh, transfer to this. I'm going to be using this large filbert oil painting brush. Again, as you can see. Quite worn down this one. I've had this one quite a while. And another thing you'll notice about that is how nice and pink it is. Well, that's not because I've left the paint on. That's how this, the paint... It's actually stained the brush that's from last week and I gave that a damn good cleaning but um, the paint just won't come off it. Another thing I've noticed about this paint as well this week is that I've only just been moving the paint around. Can you see that on my hands? There you can. I've just been moving the paint around the, the, uh, the picture around slightly and um, the paint, some of the red paint on it is still wet after a week so that shows you how the process can be quite drawn out for oil painting. The other thing is with this mask, this is something I'm having to do because of what I want to achieve, but with oil paint. Because if it was, if I was painting in watercolour, say, I'd be able to get some nice, what they call masking fluid, and I'd be able to paint that over this, just paint it all over there, and then that would dry, and then you could just paint over it. And when your paint's dry, you just, with your fingers, just pick it off and just peel it off, and it comes off like, like, um, like PVA glue. Anyway. That's, uh, those are the trials and tribulations of being an oil painting artist. Um, so let's get down to business. 
right then. So, as I say, I've got the um, I've got the colour of paint mixed mix that I already want to use, and I want to apply it quite loosely. I must not forget this week to go around the sides. Hi, Daira. Nice of you to pop in. Um, so let's give this a go. What we're going to do? What we're going to do? Let's have a bit. Let's have a bit. So we're going to make the first mark. I want to bring that sort of lighter air, air up into here a bit. So I'm mixing that with this. So well that needs to be thicker, doesn't it? You can see I'm riding over the. I am riding over the paint there so I want that to run a bit better so I get a bit more medium on that <coughs> excuse me I'm frogging my throat tonight for some reason hi darling see you there um oh, so that could come around there I'm gonna put I think I'm gonna put a bit of ready there because I want a bit that's not quite coming out our way so I'm going to get a bit of alizarin crimson that I used last week. I'm going to mix some of that into that cream. So I just need it to have a bit more something about it because it's just looking a little bit too flat at the moment. So I won't mix it in thoroughly. I'll just sort of partially mix it in. <coughs> and that way hopefully I'll get a bit of sort of veining through, through the colour. I don't want it just to completely there you go it's blending it a bit better I'll put that across there so as it'll make the make that stand out more it's always nerve-wracking this when you start to just throw paint on you're not quite sure how it's actually going to come out in the end And as usual, I've not quite mixed up enough paint, so easily solved. A bit more medium on that. Needed to flow a bit better. There we go. nice nice bit of movement on that put that onto there I don't want a nice spread across the middle fill that out a bit more a bit more on that there I want to put a bit more some more white so the yellowy kind of white that I've got on the far on the left hand side there over here I want to balance that left to me right to you I want to balance that on this side so the whole thing's got more of a sort of balanced feel to it tiny bit of yellow with that mix that in just clean off my uh, mixing knife, palette knife, bit of yellow in the white, it's nice, bit of, bit of burnt sienna, just to give it a slight, slight reddy brown feel to it, just to give it more like a creamy kind of colour, creamy effect. And there we go, so that's the colour. There we go. Nicely mixed up again. Nicely mixed in again. In fact, I may just go a bit crazy. Just mix Get a bit of that paint off there. In fact, what I think I'll do, 
use when using a brush. So there, medium, height, and away we go. So I want some of that just sort of and there, sort of balancing that out and following the contours of what I've got on there. So a bit more of that over here. Just lying on top of that and just bringing itself down. Over there. So across top of that. Down the edge. Bit of that on. I want to get a bit of that on there. Get a bit of that on the edge. Hi Angie, thanks for popping by. That's there, so I'm gonna keep I've gotta get used to not blocking the camera. As you can tell I'm not Steven Spielberg. Bit more down here, balance all that out. All that. That looks nice. Right then. Happy with that? Okay, so there's the magic bit. I'm just going to very carefully peel this masking off. Stay, sit, behave yourself. A little bit blood underneath there. You see that there? You know, like that. Dun, 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 dun. There we go. And as usual, I've just spotted something I've missed, but I'll have to. It's easily correctable. I'll just bring it in a bit. There you go. And you can see, in fact, if I leave you there. I'll just turn the easel. It's the easiest thing to do. I'll just tap the clamps off. I'll just turn the easel down. You can see now that that has quite a 3D effect of the figure sitting on top of the column. She's really coming off the canvas there now. I was, I was, I just need to touch up a bit there. I'll fetch that little bit off. A bit of my very expensive kitchen <laughs> tissue. It's nice because it's um, she's good stuff because it's quite thick, and you can get a grip of it quite well. So if I just fetch that bit off there, in fact, if I come around here, and hopefully you can see what I'm doing. I'm just going to rub that up there like that. There you go. It's a bit better. Better already. So have another little go. There you go, marvellous. Well, I think I'm going to do, just look at that. I'm going to put a bit in there, in that little gap there, a little bit of negative space between a thigh and a calf. I'm just going to bring it down so it's actually almost on the, on the figure itself. So, I'll just pop that back. Pop the easel back. I think I'll leave you there. You're comfortable there? You look okay there. What's Angie saying? Loving the background so far. Thank you. I'm quite happy with that. I'm, that's going quite well. I'm quite pleased with that. So, I'm going to get my... What am I going to get? I'm going to get a number three. I'm going to get my stick. I'm going to have a sip of pop because my mouth's drying out already. And I'm just going to paint that in a little bit closer to the figure so there's no gaps. That'll give it a, that'll make it stand out a bit better. There we go. It's more continuous. And I'll get a bit of the pinky colour for that bit down there. Just 
Lovely. Get in there. Been there just up there. Cracking. Oh, a bit on this side. Shut the front of the car. Just the top of her arm there. Bring that down to there like that. A bit around the top of the knee. So this stick is fantastic. Look at the loss stick, look at the roll stick. So useful. I've watched people paint without using one of these and they've got the hands leaning on it and they're touching the canvas. So I don't know how they do it, I really don't know how they do it. Bit more of the white. Around there. One thing I have noticed is I've lost a little bit of the definition on this, which is a shame. Because she doesn't seem to be sticking out quite so much, not standing out quite so much now, but she's up top. May want to get that bit done. That'll sort of bring it back a bit, so I'll just block that bit in there. There we go. I'll just fetch that down. Don't want it to look like I've just lined in all around her. I want it to look quite swirly. That's better. There we go. Just bring that down and around. Right, oh, lovely. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Ah, a bit in the middle, before I forget, because I know I'll forget. I always do. So, we'll just fill that bit in there. So, okay? Yeah, you can say that, okay. I haven't got my shoulder completely covering it off. In fact, that brush is a bit thick, so I'll get a thinner one. Let's try number one. That was a number three. It's too bulky for this little bit of detail. Again, you can see I'm not really using an oil painting brush here. I'm using a, an acrylic brush, but because of the style of our paint, this brush is far more usable for me. It's far more versatile. Just come down the back of a calf there. <clears throat> you should just give it a nice, nice homogenous feel to it. Nearly there. Nearly there. There we go. Just block that bit in there. That's it. Just need to get a bit more bit more of a solid line down the back of a carpet. Doing what this it always does oil paint, it's just sort of, you can't see it from where you are, but it's just riding on top of the canvas. It's not quite getting in the dips. I don't want the paint too thin because the red will just show through too much, it won't look right. So you just got to keep going over it so it's absolutely how you want it. There we go. I'm happy with that. I'm very happy with that. Not sure about that there. Not sure about that there. I mean, I've got one over there as well. I've got some there where the paint that the red's coming through. So I think I'll leave that. I think I'll leave that as it is. I think I'll leave that. Right then. So, 
I'm just going to take it. I'm just going to hang on. I'm not going to take her anywhere. I'm not taking her anywhere because I'm just going to finish the sides off before I forget. As I said last week, happens all the time. The knee really pops. Yeah, it does. It does. I, I, I was getting really quite excited about it earlier in the week, and I was just doing all this bit. I start off there. Got that major muscle tone in there. Then I did this bit. And I brought it all around there and there's a real I get a real sense of that legs in front of the back of that leg and this and that's got it's really got some sort of third dimension to it which I'm really happy with it's really quite exactly how I want it so I'm just gonna I can't quite see there but there's a bit of a gap there so I don't want that I don't like gaps do we? I want all that to look quite homogeneous what's this side look like could come down I could come down there a bit a bit further so we'll have a go at that bit of pink bit of cream I want it to be loose I don't want it to be structured at all I'll do looks all right to me happy with that right then that's the little bit of additional background that I wanted to get in. But what I'm going to do now, what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to show you how I mix the flesh tones. Now this area here, that's the right sort of, um, oh hello Malk, how are you doing? It's the right sort of um, tonality, but I'm not overly keen on the way I've got down there so I need to do some more work on there I want to blend that in better because that, that dark just just ends too quickly so I need to just to feather that out better what I want to work on tonight is this area so it's the bottom of a neck around my collarbone cleavage and that sort of that shoulder and do a little bit of this that's that's looking okay I, I want that to be lighter than this so there's definition to it and it looks like that's in front of this so that recedes and that comes forward that's my plan with that anyway but what I want to do now I'm just going to take it off the easel very carefully put it down there I'm going to get my new palette yes my new palette I'm just going to show you how I mix a flesh tone and all this could go horribly long the whole thing could fall over Paint could slide off the palette and everything. Loads of potential for embarrassment. Um, anyway, let's crack on. So, what have I got here? I've got flesh tone, basic flesh tone. I'll just bring you in a little bit further so you can just see a bit clearer. There you go, and I'll just drop you down slightly. There we go. Is that? There we go. So, I've got flesh tone. Flesh tint, as it's called. Um, forget the yellow; that's not being used. Um, and we've got some some burnt sienna, some yellow ochre, and some burnt umber. Basically, like a ready brown, a light tan brown, and a dark brown. So, what I'm only one thing I'm missing there is some white, but I don't need that quite just yet. And there's a cocker spaniel hair on the palette. Right then, so I get a bit of. Uh, a bit of yellow ochre, don't want loads, just that much, just that tiny amount there. I'm just going to blend that into the flesh tone, flesh tint, I should say. Now, if you look that colour, you really need to go and see the doctor, so because that's just a bit too in your face. That's a bit too two weeks in Torremolinos without any suntan lotion, isn't it? So that's that. Then we get a bit of red. Again, just a little tiny bit, and blend that into there. Keep it all together. That's that. Clean the palette knife off again. In fact, my tissue is getting very painty. I need another piece. <coughs> so, fold that, fold that. There we go. We'll get a bit of burnt umber, going just a bit, 
bit too much. I always squeeze too much out. There's a big dollop of it there, and it's just too much. Angie Roberts, mine fell flat on the floor in a live yesterday. Oh dear. I do, I do sympathise. Yeah, it's a hint of Terry. Mm, yeah, yeah, you're right. Getting more Terry now. Oh, the beauty of live video. I was going to say the beauty of live television, but it's not really easy. So that's that's my basic dark. That's my shadow tone for the flesh. What we need now is a bit of white. So without further ado, my spaniel, our spaniel, Ollie, by the way. Thankfully, he's not here at the moment because he's a nutcase. Uh, his hairs get everywhere, so I'm just going to squeeze a bit of white on that, there we go, lovely. He, he, I find his hairs on my desk at work, it's crazy. He's, he never follows me to work either, so I don't know how that works. Anyway, so, some white. Now, a nice chunk, of, I've got a nice chunk of white on there as you can see. I just love, I love the texture of this, it's just got a lovely buttery feel to it. So, if I just blend that on the edge, so I'm keeping my dark tone there. It's going to end up looking like that. In the time on a blue Peter tradition, here's what I prepared earlier. But that was last week, it's gone hard by now, so I can't use it. Our border terrorist hair gets everywhere. Like it, border terrorist, excellent. So, that's now going to be a mid tone. A bit of a difference in there, but that can get developed later. Later. What brand of oil? The brand of oil is Winton Oil Colour. Winsor and Newton. Love it. I've stopped buying the little tubes as well. When I say little tubes, I'll tell you what. I'll get to that in a bit because I've only got two hands. If I start trying to pick paint up and mix it at the same time, it's just going to end in disaster. So. I'll clean that off. Now that's my mid-tone, dark tone mid-tone, and I want some more white. I'm just going to clean that off there, and I'm going to mix it on the end of that. And that becomes my light tone. That's, my, that's almost my highlight colour. My highlight will be pretty much just bare white, but that'll be very, very light. Now, so I've got dark, mid, and light. Although that light, under this light, does look very similar to that one. Let me know it's not just chucked a load of white paint on it. But anyway, what I will now also do is as I'm painting, I'll, that'll get mixed into this and then that'll get mixed into that and I'll end up with about five or six or seven tones through there, all to suit the application that I want at the time. So, there, you have me mixing paint. So, back to the actual paint, I've got a range of sizes here. I used to buy, used to buy that, that sort of size, which is, it's about three, yeah, 37 millilitres. Which are quite small. If you're doing small stuff and little bit of stuff, they're not too bad. And Wilson, hi Anne, how are you doing? Thanks for popping by. That's the next size up, which is 75 mil. As you can see, it's about twice the size of that one, so it's quite a bit thicker as well. And that's a nice size of paint. They tend to last quite a while. But as you can see, I'm not painting, as you just saw down there, not painting massive canvases. But if you buy these, they're only about twice as much as the one I just showed you, and they are. There's massive more amount more amount of paint in there, 200 mil. So that's the one to buy now. But the Windsor and Newton's a good quality oil paint. So you know that looks rather you know nicely abstract, some would say. That can come off. And just move it back out of the way slightly so as I don't knock you over when I bend over. There we go. I'll get the main piece back. And that can go on there. And there we go. Yeah, that's a nice thing to do. What I've just done there is something that I need to do myself occasionally because you'll be looking at the painting, it's developing, you're just seeing how it's all going and stuff and whatnot. And then you need to just take it away. If you just take it away off your off your pa off your easel or you turn it to face the wall, then when you look at it again the next time, you look at it with a fresh pair of eyes. And you just see things that are different. You don't see all your mistakes. When you look at it all the time, when you see it again fresh, you go, ah, I missed that bit, or oh, that's, that could do a changing. Anyway, I'm still quite happy with all that. That needs a bit of work. 
that's just going to dry too bright it's not going to dry like this so I must put a little strike of pink in there later so I'll just change my reference picture over and put my image on there of the lady on top of the column and we can crack on I'll just zoom into a air that I'm going to paint so I've got a better definition so that's the other thing that I'm actually doing at the moment which you can't quite see because of where I've got the camera but I'll just turn you around slightly so you can see the reference can you spot the difference the reference is actually monochrome monotone image so I'm balancing the light and dark off that and change it to colour on this that's a bit tricky because you, you, you're only really using it really as a very basic reference um, this makes it more interesting as they say what you brackets difficult um, right then. so because I've now got a bit more area to play with what I'm going to do so as I've got something to work with is even though I've got a very as you can see there's a very light tone on in this area so I've already put that down on there I'm going to put another base tone on so he's watching Iso how you doing I've got another base tone on and uh, that'll give us something to work with because this is up this is that's been on there for two weeks now it's bone dry absolutely bone dry so I can't do anything with it Angie need to go but love to see you at work thank you very much and thanks for popping by Angie it's been a pleasure thank you thanks for supporting it's all the uh, all them um, very much appreciated and um, so I'm going to put myself some stuff on there so I've got something to work with and I can blend the lights and the darks back into that because otherwise I'm just gonna have to just get the exact tone and that's always difficult so going back to what I've just started with the mid tone that I've got and get some medium on the paintbrush get some mid tone on I don't want too much medium because it does make it quite runny so mid tone really is all around sort of that area so I'm just going to put some on there that's going into light I'll leave that light piece there I'll bring this up here so it just so has it as I've mixed this mid tone up quite nicely it's um it's not far off that it's pretty much the same as that that's fortuitous means i'm going to mix it again you'd think i've done this before wouldn't you? a couple of times so i'll put that into there i don't want to strand to the top of her arm too much and i'll come to a top of a collarbone there sort of there and i want that to be prominent I'm just going to bring that over to there, making sure that all the time that I don't have any brush lines in there. So I don't want don't want it to be that kind of style of painting. I want it to stay. Um, I want it to stay quite flat on the body. Um, don't want it to be all sort of visible brush strokes and that sort of thing. Now what I need to be careful with on this side is because the mid tone, as I said earlier, it's very close to the tone of the arm in that phase what I'm probably going to do is just run a line down there uh, of a darker skin colour just to sort of highlight that part because I don't want the two to blend in so it'll just make it makes it confusing so when the viewer is looking at the piece it needs you, the, the viewer needs to see definition and you won't really see the dark tone in there you won't unless you concentrate on it but what you will see you'll see a, a difference between the arm and the shoulder and that's what you need to see and your brain sort of makes up makes it up makes the rest of it as it goes along so it's all about it's all all a bit tricky really carrying with a bit tone put a bit more in here now on the reference piece that i'm looking at this lady obviously spends a lot of time in the gym and she's got excellent 
muscle and skeletal definition. She's like a work of art herself from a physical point of view. She must spend hours and hours and hours in the gym uh, working on her physique because she's actually a professional ballet dancer. So that's enough midtown there. But the beauty of that for me is that because she's got such good definition, it makes it easier to paint. You have to obviously watch what you're doing, where you're doing it, to make sure that everything fits in correctly. But what's really good about that amount of definition is it gives you lots of things to move in and around, and you've got lots of structure. And I know you can't see it so much on here, but you can see it there. We're not as only as she got a calf muscle, which has also got more muscle definition on the front of on the front of her leg, almost on a shin. So I've got a bit of got a bit of dark tone in there. I'm just going to put that in. In fact, what I think I'll do as well, also on that colour, I'll just get a rigger brush. Uh, where's my thinnest rigger brush? It is there. There we go. There we go. Rigger brush. So nice, very thin, long, thin brush. Great for doing thin straight lines. Uh, great for doing sails and awning if you're into painting boats. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to put a very fine line just down there. Just want to highlight that bit of her arm against against the shoulder and the chest. So what will probably happen with this is as I'm painting it in, it's more than likely just going to get blended out as I blend the rest of the skin tones together. And that just makes that arm very, very defined there. So there's definitely an arm there. Clean that off. And a bit of dark tone again there for the cleavage. Got a bit too much medium on there because it's a bit too thin. It's a paint a bit too thin, a bit too runny. I'm probably gonna have to paint that bit in a few times because it's just not, it's just not, it's too translucent. It's not opaque enough. Plus, I'm not, I'm not overly happy with that curve. Looks like she's a bit deformed there, doesn't she? Don't like that. So I can get rid of that there. That's not a problem. So beauty of oil paint, everything is correctable. That you, you can all there's always a way you can just. Correct this correctly because it takes so long to dry, it's not like watercolour. I have utmost admiration for watercolour artists because once you put it down there, generally it's that's it, it's there. There's not a lot you can do about it. So I've got a bit of a shadow tone coming down there. That colour is just not dark enough, so I need to make it a bit darker. So what I'm doing now is what I said I did at the start, I'm actually blending the dark tone into the mid tone. <coughs> Excuse me to give me that the, the tonality that I want for the shadow on her breast which is transferred off the arm. So again, all you're really doing here, all you're really doing is painting light. You're just painting light and the way it falls on the body. <coughs> so this is just going to get built up over time. So whilst that looks like quite a quite a defined line there, I'll show you my little bit of magic in a moment. I'm just going to bring that down to there. And I need <coughs> we've got a frog in my throat tonight. Quite unpleasant. Bit of that there. Just going to blend that back into there. Quite darker there, but I don't want to put that in at the moment. I'm going to leave that for a bit. And I'm going to blend that into that. And that's going to come over there. And it's just trying to chest bone there. There's like a little bit of a flick. So, 
Those are my base colours in there. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to blend them all together. So, just very carefully, very loose, hardly any pressure on this brush. I'm just, just touching the surface with the brush. And I just blend that in, just blend that in there and there. And what this does is it just removes the edge. It just puts the one colour into the other colour. Just remove the hard edge that I've just painted. Like that. And from a distance, that blends them together lovely. I'm just going to blend that up there. So just get rid of the bit of paint off there. And just blend that. Very, very smoothly, just blend that out. Wow. So, what the trouble with doing that is, whilst it gives it a nice blended effect in the skin tone, what it also does, it moves the paint around. So, the bit you painted, which is dark, now becomes lighter. So, you just have to go over it again. It's a slightly iterative pro process. But that's there's a nice bit of definition coming there already. So what I think I'll do, what I think I'll do, I'll just get another brush. Do the number two, I think number two. Is there number three? Where's my number two? Is in there? Is that number two? That is number two. So I'll get that and I'll get some light toner. Well, that's nice and thick. It's still quite buttery. It's just the base tone of the, um, excuse me, the burnt umber is quite oily. And um, just put that over there again. Yeah. And uh, it holds the oil for quite some time. It dries off fairly quickly, but when you're first mixing it, it's, um, it's just fairly oily. And so when you put the paint down, the paint is actually quite transparent. Almost like an acrylic, a thin acrylic or a watercolour. I'm just going to put that on top of there so I've got something to work with. I'm just going to pull that down there as well. As you can see, I've got very little detail on the face at the moment because I just don't want to put that in because I'm going to get quite a bit of hair coming across there. Which will obviously have quite an effect on this area because the hair is going to come across there like that. And I might just drag a bit over that shoulder down there, just like that. Don't like that. Like that. For the older members of the group. And then I'm going to pull some pull some around the hair there, around here, around here which is going to be there. Come down here, and I'll have a bit a bit little bit falling down here. I might just come over the top of there. But I want the hair to be quite loose and quite dramatic, quite feminine. I don't want it to be all sort of nicely tucked in and nice, you know, going down the back. It needs to be quite dramatic. It needs to, there needs to be, um, there needs to be a romance about it, he says. So, let's see that's on there on. Put that down there. Put that down there. So what I'm basically doing, I'm putting paint on, but it's going on when I want to work it. So whilst I put the paint on, especially in when I'm painting flash tones, it has to go on where I want it to go, but I need I need to be able to work the paint, so move the paint around the camera. It's only very lightly, but it needs to be able to blend in with the other colours on the flesh tones. So it's quite light on that shoulder there, so I'm just going to put that in there. Again, if you've forgotten from last week, I might do a test at the end of finishing this painting, but that bit there is going to be gold left. All that area is going to be gold left. So I'm going to paint all of this first, and it's all going to dry off. And when it's all dried, then I can varnish over that area, because that there will dry first, because this is the thick paint, which will take longer to dry. When over this area, it will dry quicker. And when that's dried, I can then varnish it. And when it's varnished, I can paint that red, like a dull red. And when that's dried, I can then put the 
um, gold leaf on top. I stalled a bit then because I was thinking I can't paint it in oil paint. It has to be. I have to slightly colour the glue when I say you paint it red, um, because if you put a little bit of red tint in the glue, which I'll probably use an acrylic paint for, then it makes the gold leaf shine afterwards. It makes it really pop. Yeah, a bit more up there. So, right. So I get my blending brush again. I say it's not really a blending brush. It's a brush I used, like to use for blending, but this is it's a size six. It's the same sort of brush again. It's an acrylic brush, Aqualine, Dale Rowney Aqualine, not Windsor and Newton like the paint. I've got Windsor and Newton paint and Dale Rowney brushes, the two most popular art materials manufacturers in the country. Just blend that round there like that. You can get some lovely, you can get some lovely effects by just feathering that colour. Seem to it's a joining colour. So you now on there, I'm just making that little bit of dark there, a little bit lighter, so I'm blending the light into it. So I'll have to go over that again, which I expect to do. I have to go over that again with the uh, with the dark tone. So already you can see. Well, that's giving that more body and structure by blending those colours in and it'll get better the more that I do it it is quite an iterative process you do have to work at this you just paint a bit on you blend it round which then effectively you lift some of the paint off and then you just um, put it back on again and do it all again but generally it's good if you can just let it dry off it hasn't got to be bone dry because then you can't move it but it needs to just dry off for a day so it loses some of the initial oil and then when you come to blend it it actually um, works a bit better so I've got a bit of the dark tone mid tone mid to dark tone back in where I've just taken it from very lightly and this is what takes the time painting this working it letting it dry off painting some more working it letting it dry off where the um, where the days go really well, that needs to be the same tone as that pretty much I need a bit more dark in there just down by the bottom there we go So I've got more definition on her arm now. So her arm actually looks like an arm because it's defined at the top up here. It's defined around there. More overall feeling of an arm being there rather than just a load of flesh tone. Which is kind of where I was going before. I'll just blend the edge of that in because I've got a nice little hard edge on there now. So it's going to press that out. Blend that down there. Blend that back in. There we go. I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. So we've done quite a bit tonight. We've done a bit of masking all around the legs and lower torso. We stuck the real bright bit right in the middle. And we've uh, mixed some paint and we've done some flesh tones. One little more thing to show you. The other week I had a bit of a, a practice. I'm going to put you over there now. Excuse me. There we go. I had a bit of a practice last week um, with what I'm going to do at the top. I was really pleased with it. So, if you can see that. There, can you just see where that glints? That, whoa, look at that. That's silver flake. I didn't want to use all the gold up because I didn't want to have none left when I needed it. So I've got I bought some silver flake, some copper flake, and some gold flake. And um, 
Yeah, so I had a bit of a practice and uh, that's come out quite well. I'm really quite pleased with that because what I did, you probably can't see it from there, but you just oh, you can just about see. Can you see there's just a line there, a line down there? So what I did, I painted all, all, the, all the background, all the, all the ready brown rusty colour and then I half covered it in varnish. So that half's varnished and that half's not. So I wanted to see how the flake reacted to the oil paint. So once that had all dried off nice, that doesn't take long to dry the varnish, it dries in about a couple of, well, dries overnight. Oil paint was really dry, I've been drying for a week. And so once I got that, then I'll put the gold flake on. What you do is you paint the glue on where you want it to go. It's quite a thin glue, it's like periodic glue. <coughs> Excuse me. I just put some random shapes, it just happens to look like an S. It was just three lines, two curved lines and a straight line. And um, I put that on. And as soon as you put it on, it's just amazing. It just goes, it just really pops, really, really pings. So I'm going to have that effect all around this lady's head like a halo and I really do think that it's really going to um, really going to bring it alive Almantas, how you doing? Nice to see you, thank you um, yeah, it's uh, it'll really bring that right out it'll really make it pop and I may, I may put a little bit of a little bit of the copper down there just to sort of balance the top and the bottom out so it's not too um hi jackie it's not too uh too top heavy i want it to be sort of it's like everything with with all your paintings you need an element of balance in it you can't have one big thing going up on there and nothing anywhere else so whilst i've got that there and it's quite it's very abstract in the background and i've got this column to work on so that needs that needs that needs more work. It's just it's just basically defined at the moment. You need to have a balance on. So when you're looking at it, it, it it's pleasing to the eye. It's got some it's got some um, structure about it. Otherwise, it just look a mess, and it won't look it won't look correct. And when you look at it, your brain's struggling trying to work out exactly what's where. Why is that too heavy there? Why is it like there? What's he trying to say? Is it a mistake? You know. So you don't want. You don't want that in the painting, so you, you need it to be balanced. So it's got a pleasing structure to it. So it, it, it does some semblance of order within the piece of uh, artwork when it's finished. That's the way I paint anyway. Some people like like it to have different amount of balance and a different kind of structure. But that's the way I do it. That's why I like to do. Anyway, so I'm well, sorry, Jackie and Armand, as you've just joined, but it's nearly it's nearly going out time. Um, so there we are. That's all I can get done this week because I need to I need to do a lot more detail on that. If I'm doing the detail, I can, a typical blow up, I can't do two things at once. So I can't talk about it and I can't paint at the same time. Because that's when the mistakes happen. So, I hope that's been informative. I hope I've uh, educated and entertained you. I hope you've, uh, you've enjoyed watching that again this week. Um, hopefully next week I'll be getting around to do, doing the gold leaf. Whether I'll do that on camera, I don't know. Because that was the first time we'd have done it, it would be quite scary. Plus, um, putting gold leaf on is very, very messy, as I found out when I was doing my trial. So there we go. Um, I'm quite pleased with that's progressing. I hope it's, you've, you've enjoyed watching. Uh, I really do appreciate everyone turning up and uh, saying hello and just getting involved, asking questions and stuff and commenting. Really do appreciate it, I've got to be honest. And that's that. So, oh yeah, one more thing, one last thing. Um, mentioned it last week, and uh, that um, what's Malcolm saying? Loving it, Vince. Keep up the good work. Cheers, Matt. Thanks very much. Um, I've got this exhibition tonight, which is on um, in the States, which is for three pieces that I did um, around right about January, February time. So I'm very excited about that. It's on YouTube. Um, so I'll be watching that, uh, and I will cut it down just to get my pieces on. And then I will post that on uh, on my LinkedIn page and on my Facebook page. And um, yeah, you can all see hey, me in a gallery. Fantastic. Well, not me, because that just no one want to look at that. So yeah, my paintings. So anyway, there we go. Thanks very much again. Much appreciated. And same time, same channel next week. As they used to say. Cheers, guys. Thanks a lot.